Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. Episode seven, player combat. I guess this is the most important topic for the game alongside movement. This one will also be a two-parter. In this one, I'll try to go over the code and logic stuff, and I'll leave the next one for more of the visual stuff, so like UI and particle systems. Anyway, let's first check out how the original was made and then how I tried to recreate this. Okay, so when I attack, the fists move forward a set amount and then they start returning. I can't attack until my fist has returned. So that's the thing to note. Um, Rayman also has this kind of battle mode where he actually starts strafing. During this mode, he can curve his punches. So we gotta have to make a curve projectile again. Also, his fists aren't actually disappearing when he's throwing them. That's something I would like to fix, actually. Of course, we can also charge the attack. And also, Rayman has a combat roll that he can do both in battle mode or not. Now, if there's an enemy in sight, we have this little arrow pointing towards him. Using the strafe mode or battle mode causes the camera to lock on to the enemy. And if I move sideways, the target arrow shows me I'm gonna curve my punch or not. And when an enemy is hit, this text gets spawned over him, which is a very nice punchy effect. So I made the new input mapping and set it so whenever I hold the right mouse button, Rayman's battle mode is active. When I say battle mode, I mean that he's in this strafing mode. And here's the updated code for the strafe movement. So instead of taking the input's length, like previously, I set Rayman's X velocity to be equal to the input y-axis since y-axis is the front and back arrow keys and what is also different from before instead of just multiplying this thing by the input value like last time i multiply it by the absolute value of input y and that's because input y isn't always positive when i'm holding the back key it's minus one and then i do the same thing for run velocity y so rayman's sideway movement if battle mode is active i also change the max movement speed to a strafe movement speed that I can change in the blueprint. This also requires one change in Rayman's non-battle mode movement. I need to set the run velocity's Y component to zero because otherwise if I leave battle mode while moving to the side, the sideways movement will continue. As for the camera pawn, the only thing it really has to do while Rayman is in battle mode, it has to keep its position reset to be at all times behind Rayman. Now to make Rayman find targets to lock onto, I made a new game trace channel just for the Rayman targets. And then I use a capsule trace that traces from Rayman's position to a set range in front of him. If this trace finds a valid target, it sets the Rayman's chosen target to this actor. If it doesn't, however, find anything, I have a backup sweep target that's it uses a bigger capsule. I do this so if there are more than one targets in front of Rayman, I want Rayman to focus on the one that's most in front of him. If the second sweep, however, doesn't find anything, the chosen target returns null. So this is kind of how it worked in the original game, I think, but I'm not really a fan of this system. I would much rather prefer if I could change the chosen targets just by pressing some kind of button, like it usually is in games with a lock-on mechanic, but that's something I might do in the future. For now, this is good enough. Okay, so if Rayman finds a chosen target and he enters battle mode, I set Rayman's rotation to be facing his chosen target. And as you can see, I'm running around the Crab Ninja nicely now. Okay, so time for rolling. 
Now, as the input goes, whenever I press the roll button, I set an is rolling state to true. I do this so Raymond knows he's rolling and he can like move or jump while he's rolling. And I also made this variable called prime next roll. This is here, so if you press the roll button while Raymond is still rolling, but he's near the end of the roll, you will roll again. This is kind of a quality of life feature for the player. It just feels better because otherwise sometimes you think you press the roll and Rayman should roll, but in actuality he was still rolling, so you don't roll <laughs> and you know. Now for the roll itself, let's start when you're not in the battle mode. So I have this variable start roll velocity that I can change the blueprint. This is kind of the starting speed of the roll. And then once Rayman starts rolling, he is offset by this roll velocity, but with every frame, roll velocity is decreasing by a roll deceleration variable, which is also configurable in the blueprint. So you, you can kind of change how far you want Raymond to roll. And then I have this clamp. So roll velocity doesn't go below zero. The 1000 is just this kind of arbitrary value that I expect roll velocity will never be near. So then we set this value to the roll velocities X component and we offset Rayman by this roll velocity value. Also, once roll velocity becomes less than zero, that's when I set Rayman is rolling state to false. So Rayman knows he can start moving normally again. Now the battle mode rolling is pretty much the same, except I just need to handle the roll velocity X component and the roll velocity Y component, depending on which arrow keys we're holding at the moment. And also when setting the roll velocity, for example, here in the X component, I need to multiply this by the input sign because for example, if we're holding the back key, we want Raymond to start rolling backwards. So we need the roll velocity to be in the negative. Okay, let's check this out. Great, I can roll. And if I'm in combat mode, I also roll. I of course set everything up in the animation blueprint prior to this, so the animations work. Okay, so let's move on to the fists now. But warning, brace yourselves, this is gonna be really messy. <laughs> this is at a point where I was really getting tired of C++ and I was trying to kind of move this into blueprints. Let's just say bad code, but it works. So I'll try to focus more on the logic and not on the code itself. So the kind of logic flow of Rayman throwing his fists would look something like this. We press the button. If we're holding the button, Rayman's charging his fist. Once we let go, we throw them with a set damage. First we throw the right one. If we press the button again before the right fist returns, that's when we start charging or shooting the left fist. Once we shoot the fist, that's when we spawn this projectile that's just a collision. We tell the animation graph to snap Rayman's fist to this projectile. And once the fist reaches its target, it tells Rayman, hey, I'm your, for example, right fist and I'm returning now. And once the fist returns, then Rayman knows he can shoot his right fist again. If he can't and he wants to shoot, he has to shoot his left fist. And if neither of his fists are back yet, then he can't attack at the moment. So I start by making a new C++ class for the projectiles. I just give it a collider as I'm going to copy the fist's location to this projectile. On the Raymond pawn, I have a shoot fists function. And what this does is spawns the fist projectile, sets Raymond to his owner, sets Raymond's right fist launch to true, so Raymond can't launch this again until the fist returns. I also have a variable in the fist projectile is left fist. This is here so Raymond knows which fist reached his target. So he knows which fist to start returning to his body. Right fist blend is for the animation blueprint. So the blueprint knows that Rayman's right fist should be snapped to the projectile's location. Then we set the projectile's damage to a damage we calculated in a different function here in Rayman Pawn that I'll move to in a moment. Last shot damage is for particles and stuff. So we'll leave this for now. And the shoot right fist event is an event that's made in blueprints that's called here. That event kind of handles more the animation and visual side of things. So like spawning particles and setting variables for the animation blueprint. So to quickly recap, when we call the shoot fist, we spawn the fist projectile 
and feed both Rayman and the Fist projectile all the necessary information they need, like the fist's damage, whether the fist is the left fist or the right fist, or that the fist has been launched. Let's move on to how I set the fist's damage. Here I have the charge fist event, and what this does, it adds damage to the fist as it's being charged. Here we can see the fist damage increases using a fist charge speed variable that I use. And I clamp the damage to a value between one and three, as I don't want the fist damage to be higher than that. And to simplify the damage values, I use a floor. So if fist damage is, for example, 1.5, I convert it to being just one. So in other words, I just want integer values for the fist damage. Also here we tell Rayman that we're charging the left fist right now if the right fist has been launched. So now I can charge the fist by holding the left mouse button and once I let go it gets spawned. Now I give the projectile a max range and also use a sphere trace to see if the projectile will hit anything on its travels. So now if the projectile hits something or flies further than its range, we tell Rayman which fist reached its target and we destroy the projectile. I also want to quickly note that if this hits something, we apply damage. In the previous video, I said you need to add this dynamic unhit function. However, I didn't do that for the projectile and yet it's still dealing damage, so. Now here in the animation graph, in this bo yellow box over here, is all the logic that makes Rayman's fist snap to the projectile's location. This upper half is for the right fist and this lower half is for the left fist. So right fist location is the location of the projectile. And we move the hand's right bone, so that's the right hand, to the projectile's location. Then I move the fingers and the thumb. I mean, I actually rotate them just to form a fist. I don't need to move them because they're parented to the hand. And I also change the scale a little bit. I make the fist larger so it looks scarier. So here's what happens with the fist when right fist blend is one. It, it changes into a fist and scales up. Right now it moves to a location to zero 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 location because right it doesn't have any location for the projectile because there are none. But if there was a right fist projectile in the scene, it would move it to the projectile's location. So what I want to do is when Rayman's right fist reaches his target. I want this blend to go back to zero, but I wanted to do it gradually since I don't want his fist just to snap back to their original position, but to actually travel from the projectile's location back to Rayman. And here's the code for that. So if right fist reaches his target, right fist blend decreases gradually. And once right fist blend is close to zero, I just snap it to zero and set right fist reaches target to false. So I think that covers Rayman's projectile spawning, at least broadly speaking. However, the way this works right now is that as soon as I let go of the button, I will shoot the fist instantly, which doesn't look very good. Uh, you need some kind of wind up animation to feel the impact of the punch or have some kind of anticipation that it's gonna happen. So I made this animations myself Here's the left fist punch animation. This doesn't change much in the code. All it really changes is that when I press the shoot button, I don't actually spawn the fist, but I start playing this animation. And once a certain time frame passes during this animation, I check the input again. If during this input check, I'm no longer holding the shoot button, then I just shoot the fist. But if I'm still holding the left mouse button, then I start charging the fist and shoot as soon as I let go. Okay, so let's make the fist fly towards its enemies and curving left and right. So I can't just copy the fist's behavior from the ninja crab because the ninja crab's projectile will fly to whatever the player was when they were spawned and Rayman fists, they home to their targets so you can't outrun them. Every frame they will be flying towards their target's current location. So instead what I do, every frame I rotate the fist to face the chosen target and then I move them forward along their forward vector. Now for the curved punch throw, I did almost the same thing I did for the ninja crab, except instead of offsetting the projectile using its right vector, 
I use this formula to rotate the fist and then tell it to move forward. So instead of moving forward and to the side, like the starfish projectile, it first rotates and then moves. This change was kind of dictated by the fact that the starfish projectile spins at all time on its axis, so there's no point in rotating it, while the fist doesn't, so making it oriented towards its path looks just much better. I don't have any fast moving targets yet in the game to check if this would work for enemies that move pretty quickly, but I think I'll just cross that bridge when I get there. Now to decide whether the fist should curve left or right, I have this throw direction variable. And this variable gets set through Rayman's right vector velocity. So if Rayman's moving to the right, the sign of this value will be 1 and he will curve his fist to the right. If he's moving to the left, the sign of this value will be minus 1 and he will curve his punch to the left. And if it's 0, then he will just hit straight on. Very cool. Now we can fight the crab and the crab can fight us. There is something, however, I think I should change the future. And that is instead of snapping Rayman's fist to the projectile, actually have the projectile have its own fist model and just hide Rayman's actual fist while his fists are traveling to his target. And that's because of this bug over here. This is caused by Rayman's skeletal mesh moving out of his bounds. I could fix this by increasing this value over here, but it says that this decreases lighting quality and that is perform more performance heavy. I don't really know how much, but still I don't think it's a great idea to just set this to some kind of huge value. Although maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it would be better to first check this before going in and changing everything. Okay, I think this is a good stopping point for today. We'll pick this up in the next one. As always, if you had a good time here, like and subscribe. And have a good day.